A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His ancestors stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if they were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is God's kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remain you, remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. After Jesus revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Jesus said to him, Yes. Simon Peter answered Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Jesus then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered Jesus, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. 
Jesus said to Simon, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to Simon Peter at the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen. I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this, signifying by what kind of death Peter would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to Simon Peter, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Many scripture scholars think that this particular chapter was added on to John's gospel by some other people other than the actual writer of John's gospel. And one of the reasons they would say that is this takes place after Jesus was raised. And so for Jesus to follow, to say to Peter, follow me. That's something that Jesus would have said long before. In fact, in fact, at the beginning when he called Peter and the others to be his instruments of continuing the mission of Jesus, of revealing God's love. But then, so what? And of course, most people would say, well, Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? as a way of resolving how Peter had claimed that he didn't know Jesus when he was asked during Jesus' trial if he wasn't a follower of Jesus. But we want to be aware that <clears throat> we too are called to answer the question, do we love Jesus? And for some of us, that can be a scary question because, oh, loving Jesus? Uh, that could get a little upsetting because um, some of us would just as soon um, deal with God on how faithfully we obey the commandments and so that we have a sense of security in the good things that we do. And so we pray that we may continue to allow our lives to be transformed by the love that Jesus revealed and that we let Jesus do as he did with Simon Peter, uh, resolve any failures by just simply revealing and accepting the love that Jesus shared and that we keep in mind what we prayed in our psalm. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God put our transgressions from us. And so for those of us who tend to beat ourselves up about what we've failed to do, sometimes an hour ago, sometimes a week, and sometimes many years, we want to keep those words very much in mind. God does not hold our failures against us. And so are we better than God by making ourselves miserable for our failures, sometimes way in the past? And so again, we allow the love that Jesus revealed to free us of needless worry and fear and guilt and shame and 
allow that love of Jesus to help us to help each other, to continue to focus on that love so that people, despite all the inconveniences life may hand us, COVID-19 among them, that we can continue to live lives of peace and joy and goodness. And so we offer these prayers to our all-loving God. We pray for the people in Minneapolis and as well in other cities in our country who are rightly upset about the seeming insanity of how certain people in our world, in our country, are treated, and that <clears throat> we can find ways to treat each other with the dignity uh, in which we were created. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that as more and more facilities and stores and shops are opened, including the churches that will be opening, that everyone will continue to take very seriously the directives that have been given to us to prevent further spread of COVID-19 and that those people who choose not to may change their minds, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who continue to work in the medical professions, especially those who have to deal with the sickness of people who are sick needlessly because they haven't abided by the simple and practical directions given to us, that they would continue to be patient, continue to uh, accept that they are doing their best, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for <clears throat> all of the people who had hoped to celebrate many events in their lives, baptism, confirmation, first Holy Communion, the funerals of their loved ones who have died, um, graduations that go unnoticed and other ceremonies and acknowledgments that are left to our imagination. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who are sick because of COVID-19, that they may receive the care that they need in order to recover and if recovery is not part of the picture, that they, with confidence in God's goodness, can <clears throat> accept what is truly the case, we pray. And for any other intentions that we want to offer this morning, we offer them now. Our Mass is offered this morning for Patty Scott and Ellen Baden. For Patty and Ellen, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And so, loving God, grateful for the outpouring of your love, we come to your altar to express that thanks, and we pray that as we continue this Mass, we may be renewed in your goodness and continue to uh, experience and share your love through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my offering and yours may be acceptable to God, our all-loving Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, upon the offerings of us, your people, that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit that we prepare to celebrate this weekend Cleanse our consciences so that we can live ever more fully through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus, who is our Savior and Lord. For by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us this same word made flesh in Jesus, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, our all-loving God, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son you guide men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was, <clears throat> on the day before Jesus was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ's death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jaime, our Bishop. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, all loving Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we join and address our all-loving God in the words of the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of all of us, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thinking of the people we sit near or next to, let us think of them as we allow the peace of Jesus to be renewed in our hearts at this precious time. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Dear Jesus, you know how much I would love to share your body and blood at this time. Mass doesn't seem to be anything what it could be without that gift. And yet, we pray that we may allow your presence to be renewed within us because doing so is certainly, while well, we may not understand it, is certainly something that you easily find a way to accomplish. And so, <clears throat> in these difficult, troubling times, may we continue to rely on your presence within us, that presence that continues to be renewed as we allow it to be renewed in helping us then to make the most of every day, good, bad, and indifferent, and that we will be grateful when the day comes that we can share in your body and blood. Let us pray. Loving God, by your mysteries, we are cleansed and nourished. Grant that this Mass that we have celebrated together may help us to deal with every issue that we have to deal with and help us to continue to be renewed in your goodness and kindness so that we may live ever more fully as we pray through Christ our Lord. A reminder that the next live stream Mass will be tomorrow afternoon, Saturday at 4.30, and Mass on Sunday will be live streamed at 9 o'clock. Because it's the Feast of Pentecost, if you want to either have red cloth or red, best, uh, red to close on as a way to join in the wonderful celebration of the gift of the Holy Spirit, that would be very welcome. In this time, it's important that we get news to people, so please um, check the internet or connect with uh, people that have ex access to the internet or if you're not getting the weekly newsletter, otherwise known as a bulletin, um, and you have email address, uh, please give us, get your email address to us because there is very important news to be shared. Namely, that we will begin having public masses on the weekend of June 13th and 14th but there are many, many details that need to happen as we do join together, many directives. And so <clears throat> it's important that we're all aware of them so that again, we can take care of ourselves and one another and keep each other healthy and safe. The Lord be with you. 
May our all-loving God continue to bless us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us continue to live believing that the love of God dwelling within us blesses us with peace and joy.